stage Shri Krish Gopal Krishnan, Chairman, Global Fintech Fest 2022 Advisory Board, Chairman Axelor Ventures and Co-Founder Infosys. This evening, we are truly honored to have the presence of Shri Ashwini Vaishnav, Minister of Railways, Communications and Electronics and Information Technology, Government of India. And may I further please invite Shri G. Padmanabhan, Senior Consultant, AZB and Partners, Ex-Executive Director, Reserve Bank of India and Ex-Chairman, Bank of India. Can we please have a thunderous round of applause to welcome our leaders on the stage. And once again, we'd like to extend a warm welcome to Shri Ashwini Vaishnav for joining us. Thank you very much, sir. And with that, Mr. Gopal Krishnan, over to you, sir. Sri Asni Vaishnavji, Honorable Minister for IT Government of India, Mr. G. Patmanabhan, friends, we have had a fantastic four days of um, knowledge sharing, discussions, debates, keynote speeches, panels, networking, exhibition, and I truly believe that with everybody's support and cooperation, we have created a very important platform for not just the fintech industry, but the financial services industry, and a platform that now can grow to become a global platform. I firmly believe that um, you know, we need to work together to raise our own aspirations of uh, what we can achieve here in India. And it's uh, only appropriate that in the closing session, uh, we have Sri Ashni Vaishnavji with us today. And um, of course, Padmanabhan is uh, from the FinTech financial services industry and an ex-regulator also. Uh, but I am from the IT industry. And I was uh, telling the minister that uh, it's strange that there are two people who have connected with IT here. But it's okay because this is the FinTech uh, conference, you know, finance and technology, right? So it's appropriate. But the, the reason I mention this is um, I strongly feel that what we have been able to achieve in the IT industry can become a model for you to think about. Because India needs a very strong financial service industry. India needs a very strong fintech industry. In fact, many of our companies must become global multinational corporations. Uh, and, and the model, and I'll we'll be very brief, the model is, you know, if you look at the IT services industry, five out of the top 10 companies in the world are Indian. The entire world depends on India for um, IT services today. Some of the, you know, most important work is getting done here. You know, IT for all the financial services industry, fintech industry is all done in India. We have made this a model for the world. We did this by working together. When we build our own companies, we built an industry. I think it's very, very important to realize what it means to build an industry. We are fierce competitors, but we work very closely. We work very closely with the government. You know, I can talk about one of the best policies for single window clearance ever in India is the software technology parks policy created by the uh, then Department of Electronics truly single window clearance um, because 
one agency in Bangalore could give us all the approvals, import, export, building permits, everything. What, where, what we report on exports, we report to the software technology park. They had the data. And even today, I can't think of a single window clearance system that's better than that. And I don't know why we can't use that model. But the, the, the reason I mention this is we work very closely with the uh, Department of Electronics then, and we even today work very closely with METI. Anything to do with um, IT industry, anything to do with digital, we work very closely with the department. And we can build an industry only, only if all of us work together to build that industry. And, and that's why I believe this closing session, having Sri Asni Vaishravji here, uh, is very appropriate for um, the fintech industry. Uh, the backbone for fintech is technology. Um, you know, the, if, we have, if we didn't create the best, I believe, telecom infrastructure in the world, um, highest quality and lowest cost, affordability, you know, I've been repeating this again and again, affordability, right? Nowhere in the world at 4,000 rupees, you can get unlimited calls, unlimited messages, and one GB of data every single day. Nowhere in the world. Um, and the telecom industry, by and large, is now self-sustaining and uh, is, is growing. So we need to think about these models which exist here in India, and I hope, I hope, well, let me change the word, I hope. I believe that um, all of you, because I have met many of you, I have seen the energy, I have seen the passion, I have seen the innovation, you will indeed create a world-class, world-beating financial services and fintech industry. With that note, uh, let me, you know, say thank you to all of you because you have, you know, still I can see the room is reasonably full. Thank you all for uh, participating very actively, supporting this very actively, and hope that this will set a new benchmark for uh, such events in India. And this event itself will become bigger and bigger. Now, Sri Ashni, uh, Ashwini Vaishnavji is uh, a minister. I had some interaction, not a lot, but I can say that he is very approachable, very down to earth, understands the issue, le learns more about things before he decides to do something that's, with my limited interaction, that's what I could understand. And I'm happy that uh, he is here in person. And uh, let me now request him to share his thoughts on this occasion. Thank you very much. Very good afternoon. Valedictory session, eh? Thoda sa. Tired, sa. How many days? Fourth day. Third day. There was a pre-event day. Third day means very difficult. So how do I catch your attention? How many are from non-fintech? Let's see. Thoda sa udar ki light bada sakte Can we improve the lighting of that side? I cannot see anybody. Light is all focused here. Non-fintech, okay, okay, okay. Quite a few, quite a few. How many of you use uh, train for your traveling? Once in a while at least. Quite a few. Excellent. How many of you saw a video where a train is running at 180 kmph and a glass of water is there? Was it cool? Kitne log hai? Was it good? Kitne logon ne dekha? 
do you know ch chalo let's have a quiz because otherwise the valedictory session is very difficult to manage how many seconds does it take for that train vande bharat to reach 0 to 100 thoda jyada ambitious hai it's a 16 coach train bahut lambi hai it's not a car Good guess. Thoda or? Thoda or guess? Eight. Thoda or guess? Arey tukka to thoda sa. Ah, thoda sa. Chalo, I'll ask another question. Bullet train. How many seconds does it take from for reaching zero to hundred? Fifty-five seconds. Fifty-five seconds is what bullet train takes to reach. 0 to 100. And Vande Bharat takes how many seconds? Now you make a guess. 52. Who said 52? Khade ho jaiye. What's your name? Give a big round of applause for him. Cool? Why I gave this example in the beginning? Why I gave this example in the beginning? I give this example because Vande Bharat train is fully designed in India by Indian engineers, by Indian brains, fully manufactured in India by Indian engineers, by Indian brains. If we can achieve something as complex as designing a train that runs at 180 kmph, Without the water spilling, dekho, wo glass to hili nahi, sari dunya hil gai. Agar wo glass hil jati to, hum hil jate. That's the power of our collective brain power, our collective strength, our ability to imagine, our ability to execute, and our ability to think big. And Honorable Chris Sir is what we all call, right? Puranam thoda lete, we always call him Chris Sir. I as young IT engineer used to call him Chris Sir. Mr. Padmanadhan Sahib and all the friends present in this hall, that is the power that we can really channelize if we want to. And we have done in multiple industries. Industry after industry, we can become the leaders the way we became the leaders in IT industry. So what is relevant for your fintech? I would like to touch upon three main points. First is, what is the digital infrastructure that we are focusing on? How we are building it? How we are expanding it? Because that's what every service that you build will run on, right? Second is, what is the regulatory framework that we are creating? The regulatory framework is of very, very importance, extremely high importance because that will help you navigate the circumstances in a very proper way, systematic way, methodical way. Third, I'll talk about the social inclusion, the societal imperatives, how each and every activity that you do, how, to, how each and activity that we in the government do affects the society and what we should be looking out for. I'll take about 15 minutes to touch these three points and then we can have some question answer, we can have a very interactive session. The first and foremost thing is about the digital infrastructure. You are aware that we recently did some reforms in the telecom sector Telecom is the primary uh, gateway to all digital services. We did some reforms and today, as Chris sir also said, the telecom sector has now come out of the huge, large series of litigations. It has now come and it has become a stable, healthy sector and now it's on the growth path. We are also, we completed the 5G auction, 5G spectrum auction and we would be launching the uh, 5G services very soon. Honorable Prime Minister will launch it 
in the first week of October. And unlike many other countries which took years to roll out, we target that within two years we should be completing a very, covering a very large section of the country. That's our aim. And we are on good uh, path to achieve that. Simultaneously, we are also doing two more things, which is of very important, uh, which is of very important relevance for all of us in this room today. Each and every village in the country deserves to be connected, deserves to have good digital services, and then, then only the reach of the services that you provide in the fintech space, in edutech, in medical, so many different services that you provide, those services will be able to reach the last person of the society, the marginal sections of the society. So, we are investing close to 30 billion dollars, close to 30 billion dollars in reaching out to each and every village in the country, each and every hamlet in the country, each and every gaon ka ek ek tola, ek ek basti, dur daraj ke gaon chahe pahad pe ho, jungle mein ho, nadiyon ke paar jana pade, kahin bhi jana pade, we are committed ki hum fiber leke jayenge, 4G bandwidth leke jayenge, aur future mein 5G bandwidth leke jayenge to each and every such village. And that is what is going to provide the reach, the connectivity, the space that you need to work and also provide opportunities for the youth of those villages to put their creative energies and make sure that they can also participate in this great digital journey that we are seeing under Prime Minister Modi ji's leadership. Whatever needs to be done to reach out to the farthest of the far places, we will do. So far, we have been able to reach about one and a half lakh gram panchayats. Aap mein se kitne log hain dur daraj ke gaon se aate hain? I am one of them. Aap kaun se jake se aate hain? Koi batai hai piche se? Anyone of you? Aap batao, aap batao. Batao. Na. Koi volunteers nahi hai. Okay. Batao. Kaan se? Sholapur district, right? Sholapur district ke, kaun se panchayat se? Koi ni tej bollo yaar? College mein jaise bolte te. वहाँ पे आपके इंटरनेट का फाइबर पहुँचा है, पहुँचा है, और उसको दूर आसपास के गांवों में भी पहुँचाने की व्यवस्था होगी। What we are doing is good. Thank you. Now what we are doing is, we will be creating an ecosystem of village entrepreneurs. गांव के अंदर फाइबर ले जाना है। गांव है वहां पे रहने वाला व्यक्ति चाहिए पानी तूफान रास्ते में कोई गाड़ी चल रही है फाइबर कट गया लॉट्स ऑफ थिंग्स कैन हैपन राइट दे हैज टू बी अ पर्सन लिविंग इन द विलेज टू मेक श्योर दैट देयर इज 99.99% अवेलेबिलिटी ऑफ द फाइबर कनेक्टिविटी राइट हाउ डू वी डू दैट डू वी एम्प्लॉय अ लार्ज सेक्शन ऑफ पीपल फ्रॉम सम प्लेस एंड सेंड देम देयर नो व्हाट वी आर प्लानिंग इज Create a whole ecosystem of village entrepreneurs. गांव में रहने वाले नौजवान की शक्ति इतनी है कि वो वाकई में वहाँ पे अच्छी सर्विस प्रोवाइड कर सकता है. Can we channelize the energies of those people, those youngsters, and make them part of the growth journey so that they become self-employed, they become entrepreneurs, and they also employ more people. That will be the model for taking to the taking fiber to the last place in the country. We have tested this model and close to 80,000 new connections are being given every month. 80,000 connections every month. So that is the level of enthusiasm which is there and that is the commitment of our government 
to make sure that fiber reaches each and every village and high speed code quality bandwidth is available to every person in the country. That's what, that's the highway we are laying for you. 4G connectivity, fiber connectivity, and 5G rollout. These are the three things on digital infrastructure that I wanted to share with you. I'll come to the second point, which is digital regulation. Our digital regulation begins with overhauling the laws because those are the laws which were created for a totally different era. For example, the telecom sector is today governed by a law which was enacted in 1885. How many of you were born in that? I cannot even imagine telegraph that is how many years? 138 years, almost 130, 100, more than a century, right? We are still governed by a law which is 1885, another law which is 1933, third law which is 1950. So, Prime Minister has given us the target that you overhaul the entire telecom regulatory setup because telecom is the foundation of digital life. Telecom is the foundation through which fintechs, all the different innovators who are collected in this room, all of you, your primary source of digital, reaching out digital services is through telecom. So last night we uploaded the new telecom bill, Indian Telecommunication Bill 19, uh, 2022. So please take a look at that. See what are your concerns, does it meet your aspirations. A very detailed explanatory note has also been published along with the bill so that you can understand it in easy language. What we are trying to do in that is, we are trying to create a framework which is a very interactive framework. It's not just government as the big regulator, and the industry as the regulated, but an interactive system in which the industry's concerns are addressed by the government and government's concerns are duly taken into consideration by the industry. Why that is important? That is important because we also have to look at what is the protection of users. If users are not protected, then there will be a backlash against technology. Navigation of the wave of technology has to be very systematic. It has to be very balanced. Our societies need to be, the way our social life is, need to be properly molded into the new world that we are seeing today. So very clearly defined Who's the scope? What is the scope of X? What is the scope of Y? What is the scope of Z? All the stakeholders, it has been done in a very proper way. Some of the real, really good brains have really worked on it. So I request all of you to take a look at that and give your suggestions. There is an email ID given where you can send your suggestions. Very consultative process. It's not something that anybody is thrusting upon anybody else, right? It's a very consultative process. We uploaded a consultation paper in July and received comments and basis those comments, this bill has been drafted. And again, we are starting the consultation process where on the bill, you can give your views. Next will be the digital data protection bill. Digital personal data protection bill. This has been in works for some time. Things changed during COVID and now the new version is about to be uploaded for consultation. Again, the focus will be on consultation, focus will be on creating an environment where the scope for innovation increases, it doesn't get stymied. The space for startups grows because that's where the jobs are, that's where the youth's aspirations are. That's where all of you are putting your energy in. Then there will be overhaul of the IT Act. Information Technology Act is of 2000 vintage. World has really changed in the last 22 years. So that will again be overhauled. 
So we are looking at three or four such legislations which will basically create a comprehensive set of legislation for the digital world. Prime Minister Modi ji has given us a clear mandate. He has given us a target that our digital regulatory framework should be globally benchmarked. When our companies and our youngsters are creating solutions that the world is taking note of, why shouldn't our regulatory framework should also be of the same order of global competitiveness, global quality, global benchmarking, where the world comes and examines our regulatory setup and says that, oh, what India has done, we should also do. That's the mandate PM has given us. And we are working on that. I'll seek all your inputs and great suggestions on this entire journey. So the first piece was digital infrastructure, second was the uh, digital regulatory framework, and third piece is about the whole social inclusion and society, societal imperatives. My request to all of you is, while we are working in a tech space, we should not forget what is there, what is the change that we are bringing in the common citizen's life, in the life of the poorest of the poor, in the life of youth, in life of our daughters and sisters and mothers, what are we doing? Whatever we do, we should keep every section in mind, every section of the society in mind. There are hundreds of such examples which cause serious concern. For example, somebody getting addicted to online games, losing all the savings that that family had, and getting into real distress situation. We can say that this is a choice that we have given, we haven't forced anything. Aisa kehna bahut asaan hai. Lekin digital world mein addiction is very easy. This is something that we have to realize. And if you don't realize, then society will have a backlash. Online gaming ho gaya. Serious regulation is needed. Paytm, I'm sorry not to take a word, name, but fintech payment systems mein fraud ki possibilities hai. Somebody can lose so much money. All those things are there. So, how do we make sure that the society is in tune with the where technology is growing. Taxation ke points hai. If analog world has a taxation, why shouldn't digital world should also have that same taxation? If analog world has a particular regulation, why shouldn't digital world also have that regulation? So some of the sectors which are really cause, causing concern in the society, we must really, really come forward as the industry as a joint group, government and industry should work together and create a solid, robust regulate, regulation, set of regulations for all these concerns. If you don't do that, it will cause so much of resentment that industry will not be able to face it tomorrow. So my request is that we should be proactive on this. Whether it is online gaming, it is crypto, it is payments, it is credit frauds which are happening day in and day out. All these sectors which is uh, the content which is the quality of content which is there, the fake news, the ability of spreading fake news at a very rapid pace. All those things need to be regulated and regulated in a very systematic way, regulated in a very robust way. It doesn't mean that we have to remove the scope for innovation, it means that we have to increase the space for good innovation and we have to reduce the incentives for going out without considering the social imperatives in mind. I hope you will agree with this because without your support and without your cooperation, 
one-sided regulation will also never work. So it has to be interactive, it has to be, we have to work together to achieve that goal. There are, I have heard my counterparts in the world, digital ministers of really developed countries who say that today we are worried that our societies are getting disrupted because of many of these things. It's not just our society, but societies which are very mature in terms of their economic, uh, uh, in, in terms of their income, in terms of their access to technology, in terms of their exposure to technology, in terms of their legal frameworks, they are also worried. So we have to have a conscious understanding, we have to have a clear thought process and come forward as industry that these are the things in which industry would like a regulation from the government and these are the things in which we will do our own self-regulation and these are the things in which we would ask the government to punish the people who are not thinking of the nation first, society first as the imperative. So I wanted to share these three things with all of you and congratulations for organizing this three-day conclave. This would have really given you an opportunity to network, opportunity to understand others' viewpoints, opportunity to showcase your products and services, and I hope that similar opportunities come in the future. Thank you very much. We can have questions now. Hello. Oh, yeah, my question. Sir, this is Tarun. I work for a fintech Please company. increase the light there. Actually, we can have the entire hall. Hi, my name is Tarun, sir. Uh, I love the work that your administration is doing with railways right now, modernizing the stations, etc. I had the privilege to visit a couple of TA2 stations like Jabalpur, and I was, you know, a really mind-blowing work there. My question to you, sir, is a lot of talk is happening about digital connectivity, taking fiber to the rural areas, etc. But what we have seen in the world and what China has shown to the world also is that to increase income levels, to increase per capita income of the population, rapid urbanization is crucial, right? Would love to hear your views and also your administration's plans on that aspect because in this conference and even otherwise, I don't hear a lot about that. What are we doing to, you know, for the rapid urbanization to take place without displacing a lot of these poor people, whether it is via land acquisition for the current bullet train project that is happening between Mumbai to Ahmedabad, et cetera. A lot of farmers, et cetera, are being displaced and it's natural, there is nothing wrong with it. So what is your view and the administration's view on it? So your question has three parts, right? First is about uh, what are we doing to take the fiber to the rural areas, second is rapid urbanization, third is about land acquisition. Is that correct or can you? What I wanted to understand was how, what steps will be taken to manage this urbanization that is going to happen. Absolutely. Urbanization is a strength for us, it's an opportunity for us and it can become a problem for us if we do not manage it well, very right. Um, the way we are working on urbanization is, first, foremost, how do we make it interactive? How do we make it participative? Participative as in, for example, the town planning scheme. How, how many of you are aware of the TP scheme which was piloted in many cities and today it has become quite a good interactive thing? Town planning scheme. No, okay. So this is a different set of, right? So, again, a very clear thought process where the people who are landowners, the farmers, they should be the ones who drive the urbanization, right? Instead of government going out and acquiring the land, the farmers should be the one who come out and, okay, we pool our land in this particular area, let's say 40 acres, 50 acres. We create common infrastructure, which is public infrastructure, and the balance area is what is used for building 
commercial, residential, any kind of activities which are needed in this. That's the way forward instead of government going out. For example, in the bullet train project itself, there is hardly any displacement of farmers because we decided to elevate the entire project, right? Take it on an elevated viaduct, elevated bridge, so that the um, foot, the, the area which is there, the footprint of the project is reduced to a very small level. So that's the thought process going forward. Almost every project we are thinking of reducing the land footprint. Okay. Yeah? This side. Uh, very good evening, Mr. Minister and respected members of the panel and fellow entrepreneurs. This is Anand here. Uh, founder of Inns of Innovations, uh, we are a Chennai-based firm. And uh, first of all, I would like to appreciate the efforts of governments on the smart transport system, be it, uh, the, I mean, for example, in the railway ministry. Earlier, it were a nightmare for us. I'm a frequent uh, train traveler. I've been traveling in trains for the last uh, 25 years or so, right from my school days. Booking a ticket is not that easy, and the government has implemented uh, S4 HANA implementation, and uh, ticket booking is very easy for us, not uh, no, needed to stand on long queues and all these things. Uh, I need to appreciate on that, and secondly, I, we witnessed uh, your presence uh, in RVD um, last month on the trial run, and uh, also on the smart infrastructure projects that the government has been doing, and through uh, the other ministries as well, be it in different areas, be it from agriculture or fintech. And my question here is, like I have been thinking sometimes, like uh, as I said, I'm a frequent uh, uh, traveler. Uh, <coughs> I mean, different metro trains or transport systems uses different cards. Why is that we are not uh, integrating all of them together? So if when I am traveling from Chennai Metro, I will not be able to travel to the Ma Bangalore Metro or Mumbai Metro with the same card. So in the developed nations like UK and US, they use the smart card and they use it for uh, no all transportation system, be it in the trains or buses or uh, no uh, the, the other uh, this thing, transport system. So do we have any plans in the future to integrate that? And secondly, what are the ways that uh, you will be taking forward um, <clears throat> to focus on um, um, below poverty level people to commute safely and provide the infrastructure like buses in some states? I mean, uh, sorry to say, buses are really pathetic. We will not be able to step inside the buses. And we need to use cabs and all these things. So I mean, what are uh, your initiatives for those things? And uh, thank you for the opportunity. Rumba <laughs> Nandri. Thank you, sir. Good, uh, very good question. First is about the integration of payment systems across transportation sectors, right? Um, a project was taken up, common mobility card. The way technology has evolved over last five, seven years, 10 years, I think probably card will probably not be a right mode Probably mobile phone itself will become the common integrating factor. <clears throat> Work has been done on that, and I think it should move forward. Yes, there are challenges in integrating uh, the payment systems, but can I give this as a challenge to this, since this is a fintech forum, why, why not we as this group, in this group of fintech entrepreneurs, why can't we take a challenge to come up with a concept note and make a presentation to me and other ministers who are involved in the urban transportation of what could be the solution which will stand today's scrutiny and tomorrow's technology change for a common mobility payment solution. Shall we take that as a challenge? Yes, sir. Good. So let's take that as a challenge. How many days do you need to come up with a solution framework? Uh, one and a half months. Two months? Yeah, one and a half months to two months. All right, so this is now 22nd September, October, November. Can we have a meeting in November? Sure, sir, right here. So I think 30 to 45 okay. days from the association, we will uh, coordinate and integrate and present to you, sir. Super. Yeah. Super, ah. Excellent. All right, question from that side. Hi, sir. This is Shreyans from Finsire. We are a lending infrastructure platform to essentially collateralize income and assets. 
right? Uh, prior to this, I had the opportunity to, to live, work in about you know, four countries, seven years for now, and work with the Singapore government as well. A uh, lot of learnings that I did take from a lot of governments, and uh, I was fortunate enough to see, to see and come back of what is happening in India. This has been a year now in India, and I've never seen payments as, as good as in India in compared to Hong Kong, China, Singapore, and the US. I must admit that. The ability to make it uh, you know, in a decentralized environment uh, to ensure that uh, multiple payment providers can be built on uh, an open source rails is very, very unique, uh, which we are seeing, to be honest, uh, being unfolded uh, in, in the recent war as well. Right? Uh, coming back to, to my experiences working with the Singapore government as well, what I've learned is the accessibility to the governments is very, very, uh, you know, kind of straightforward and easy. Uh, the ability for, and I do understand that, you know, there are a lot less of people, so the government has, you know, kind of a lot less of people to hear from as well, right? Uh, but the accessibility was an email away or, or, or a text away to say that the response also was very quick, right? Uh, we just started our firm. We are about a year old or so. I feel there are three things, and I'm sure, you know, with the recent uh, bill as well that you have kind of launched, the accessibility is a lot more easier right now. I feel there are three things specifically to hear not just the, the you know, the biggies of the industry of fintechs, but also to, to someone who's just started, right? Uh, there are three things that are essential. Accessibility, accepting of the accessibility that we have given, and then accelerating the force through it, right? I hope and wish to see that happens not just with the sole regulator, but also multiple other regulators that hold, say, the insurance data of the nation, the gold data of the nation, uh, to unlock potential capacities, not just in payments, but also in credit, so that credit gets access to them uh, at a very uh, safe space and not just unsecured and NPS being created as we are seeing today. And uh, you know, would love to hear your thoughts on what the other uh, regulators are building upon to unlock the true value in terms of asset collateralization that takes place in the nation as well. And IT plays a huge role in that as well, right? So would love to hear your thoughts, sir. Excellent point. And in fact, the whole world is today taking note of the account aggregator model that India has created. There is so much interest in the way a safe and a secure consent mechanism has been created by RBI, thank you for that, for excellent a framework where the interest of both the data providers and the data consumers and creating a seamless structure in which the payment history is available in a proper way, asset ledgers are available in a proper way, in a secure way, all those things are today being noted by the world and probably the model that we have created here, the account aggregator system, probably that might become the model for the world in online credit uh, space. There will be many more innovations which come if we separate cryptocurrency from the crypto technology or the blockchain technology from the cryptocurrency, then the potential of, potential of using blockchain for creating a secure payment system, credit system, investment system, and then putting that in this frame of, framework of account aggregator, I think that will be, I'm not an expert on this, but probably that will be, from whatever I hear from all of you, that might be the way forward. So, and uh, if you have more thoughts on that, we can organize a session where we can call the people from finance ministry, we can call people from other stakeholder ministries and listen to you and see what we can contribute in terms of the regulatory framework. Regarding accessibility, yes, there will be challenges in a country of this uh, scale, but we can create probably a forum, for example, for the IT industry. The forum which was created was NASCOM, and NASCOM has turned out to be a very effective forum by which a regular interaction can happen between the members of IT industry collectively or individually or in groups with the relevant stakeholders in the government. So probably we can think of similar uh, framework for FinTech, for EdTech, for MedTech, for 
any of the uh, startup groups that we are thinking, and we can put our heads together, we can think together, we can probably in a time frame of one or two months, we can come up with a suggestion on that. We are now creating a similar thing in railway, because again, the uh, disparate bodies of, let's say, the coach manufacturers have a body, then the engine uh, component manufacturers have another body, wagon guys have another thing, track people have another body, then it doesn't work. We have to look at holistically from our point of view and from the country's point of view. So we can probably think of this, take a look at what are our needs and create a body, then accessibility becomes very easy and organized. Thank you. Absolutely. Great. See. Thanks. Yeah. So, and so may I ask who's, who's minding the time? Who's looking at the time? <laughs> no, no. We have to. <laughs> okay. Self-regulation. Sir, I, ha I have a question, sir. Good evening, sir. Yeah. Sir, my name is Bharat Panchal. I'm a former uh, chief of risk at NPCI, currently working with Discover. Sir, my question is about privacy. Uh, India, fortunately, has become the one of the richest data-rich country in the world, thanks to you know tech innovation. What the entire industry sitting in this room has done in last uh, almost a decade or now. But when it comes to privacy, we started journey long back 2017. Bill, I mean, the first committee constituted. We walked through almost five years, and all of a sudden, is now withdrawn. While the cybercrime and the so many other nuisances has increased a lot, the same time probably one of the best use case of data monetization, which is being talked at the industry level. In absence of privacy bill, and in uh, other, other hand, the growing data in our country, where are you seeing the balance in between? And the second point is, you know, how long it will take, because when it goes for consultation, looking at, you know, their iteration, what happened in the last five years, the worry is that will it take another five years to have privacy bill back for this country? So first I would like to clarify that the right to privacy is already there. Once the Supreme Court gives certain rights to our citizens, that right exists whether there is a bill or there is, there is no bill. That thing we must very clearly understand and we should clearly know. So if there is any violation of privacy, it is actually right... Uh, it's a violation of the right given by the Supreme Court of India, right? So, please have a seat. So, that right is already there. Bill definitely went through a series of different uh, consultations and when the Joint Parliamentary Committee took it up, they recommended 88 uh, amendments in a bill of 91 sections. So, there was no way no option but to withdraw that bill and come and bring a fresh bill. It also gave us an opportunity to incorporate the things that have changed since 2019. The bill was of 2019 drafting and since then COVID came, pandemic taught us the importance of society's imperatives vis-a-vis -vis right to individual's privacy, right? All those things, that balance which we need in the society, that was very clear during the COVID uh, pandemic time. And we also have the learnings from so many other countries which have implemented their regulation, implemented their privacy rights. So now we are in a very good shape. It's a matter of few days only when the bill will be uploaded for consultation. And we have considered all the points, all the inputs that we have received from various stakeholders. Okay, so last question. Mr. Asbe. Sir. Then, okay, so Mr. Asbe's question will be the last. Yours is second last. Sure, sir. Yeah, please. Please go ahead. Sir, my name is Ravi Sutanjani and I lead a partnership for a startup. startup. Bharati Railway is a very popular question. So, what do we do transparency? And UPI is a very popular number one payment system. But in Bharati Railway, in Bharati Railway, पेंट्री में आईआरसीटीसी के वेंडर्स आज भी यूपीआई से पेमेंट नहीं लेते हैं तो हम उसके लिए क्या कर रहे हैं बहुत ही अच्छा क्वेश्चन है ट्रांसपेरेंसी और यूपीआई का यूज ट्रांसपेरेंसी के लिए टुडे ऑलमोस्ट एवरी लार्ज टेंडर ऑफ इंडियन रेलवेज इज ऑन इलेक्ट्रॉनिक प्लेटफॉर्म 
वो दिन गए जब टेंडर लेके जाना पड़ता था कोई भी प्रोक्योरमेंट करना है कुछ भी करना है तो आपको फिजिकल पेपर में जाना पड़ता था वो सब दिन गए प्रैक्टिकली एवरीथिंग हैज बीन शिफ्टेड टू इलेक्ट्रॉनिक प्लेटफॉर्म सेकेंड देर आर हंड्रेड्स ऑफ स्मॉल 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 कॉमर्शियल एंटिटीज ऑन स्टेशन स्टेशन पे चाय की दुकान है स्टेशन पे किताब की दुकान है स्टेशन पे एक बेसिक ट्रैवल एक्सेसरीज की दुकान है उन सब के जो एलोकेशन होते थे उन सब के जो रिनल होते थे वो भी अब इलेक्ट्रॉनिक ई ऑक्शन पे लेके आ गए अगर आपने रिसेंटली न्यूज में पढ़ा हो तो जस्ट बाय कवरिंग अबाउट ट्वेंटी परसेंट ऑफ दी कॉमर्शियल इस्टेब्लिशमेंट जो रेलवे को कुछ ही मिलता बहुत छोटा अमाउंट मिलता था उसकी जब उसकी जगह अब आठ करोड़ आए ई ऑक्शन में 836 करोड़ अगेंस्ट एन अमाउंट विच यूज टू बी अ वेरी स्मॉलिश अमाउंट दैट इज बिकॉज ऑफ ट्रांसपेरेंसी फिर इंडिया पोस्ट में जो आपने यू की बात कही इंडिया पोस्ट में जब भी कोई पार्सल या कोई लेटर लेता था तो उसका इलेक्ट्रॉनिक पेमेंट यू के पेमेंट की व्यवस्था नहीं थी टूडे ऑलमोस्ट एवरी पोस्ट ऑफिस हैज शिफ्टेड टू इलेक्ट्रॉनिक पेमेंट सेम जर्नी इज नाउ हैपनिंग इन आई आर सी टी सी इन द आई आर सी टी सी सर्विसेज एवरी पेमेंट दैट विल हैपन ऑन द ट्रेन ऑन द स्टेशन रैपिडली मूविंग टूवर्ड्स डिजिटल पेमेंट तो ये तो क्लियरली एक गोल की तरह आगे बढ़ रहे हैं इसमें इट मे टेक कपल ऑफ मंथ्स इट मे टेक सेवन मंथ्स इट मे टेक टेन मंथ्स बट नॉट इन ईयर्स राइट नॉट इन ईयर्स ये तो रैपिड जर्नी है आगे इसी डायरेक्शन में बढ़ेंगे आसफे साहब लास्ट क्वेश्चन सर यू स्पोक अबाउट 5G uh, what is your input or advice to the fintechs and the banks present here what are the use cases what is the preparation they should do to leverage this india going into the 5G from a connecting to the consumer servicing or what are, what is that we can start preparing on to to take full advantage of this 5G what has been efforts which has been put up by the government excellent question 5g will open a pipe it will provide bandwidth it will provide speed which was not seen so far which was not experienced so far and that opens up so many different use cases that basically limited only by our creativity that that much i can say the constraints of technology will be removed whatever you imagine you can really create those use cases think of agriculture think of education think of healthcare think of credit think of payment think of delivery services think of any service that you think that you can imagine everywhere 5g is going to bring that huge step change in the way technology will be able to assist your use cases so don't limit yourselves by technology anymore the journey of 5g will bring you excellent path excellent doors excellent highway excellent pipe which you can use for creating your solutions great so thoroughly enjoyed this session thank you so much well all good things must come to an end so let's decide whether we had it for 4 days or 3 days i would say first day was virtual that 3 days we have been here eight tracks participation from 125 plus countries 250 plus sessions we had exhibits uh, expo booths more than 300 more than 800 speakers 200 of them women 250 international speakers and 20000 plus attendees i think we have truly arrived i have said this before but i want to repeat this i think there is a difference between an event and a festival and even there something which gets conducted people participate a festival where you know the dates you will know the next one at the end of 
what I have to say, where the people and the system come on an auto mode and participate on their own. So to sustain this as a festival in the years to come and being talked about as the regional festival that people are looking forward to attend, I would request each one of you present here to automatically come forward and be a participate, participate in making this event even bigger and better next year onwards. Now, I don't think for a valedictory section of such a great event, we could have anybody better than Honorable Minister Ashwini Vaishnavji. Thank you, sir, for coming over. And I think your domain knowledge and your clarity of thought came through, not only in your address, but the way in which you took questions and answered them. So thank you very much for that. I think the way you succinctly describe the future digital journey for us, the country, under three broad heads, the digital infrastructure, the regulatory framework, and the social inclusion, I think very critical, the way forward. I think he answered the questions about the customer protections and the importance of privacy. I hope, I mean, few days away, the minister indicated, I hope it comes through, because I think one of the things I must admit I get quite irritated about is the so-called digital marketing where the unsubscribe button never works. If you unsubscribe, probably you get twice the number of messages you are getting earlier. I think as a country, we have changed a lot. I think we knew we, we know. We know that we can. We talked about what we can. Then we ruminated for a long time. I think now there is an urgency to act and act within a time, and that's the important change that we are all seeing around us. Uh, again, Minister, thank you very much for that. I think I don't want to take any more of your time. I just want to announce, while thanking the Minister for his August presence and all of you for your active participation, I want to announce the date for the next year's FinTech Festival which is going to happen between, can put, somebody put that slide up? 5th and 7th September 2023. So again, requesting your active participation in the next year's event. Thank you very much for all your support. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. We'd also like to thank Sri Ashwini Vaishnavji for joining us this evening, for joining us at the Global FinTech Fest. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, as we come to the end of the third edition of the Global FinTech Fest, I hope all of you have also taken note of the dates of the upcoming edition, 5th, 6th, 7th September 2023. On that remarkable note, we come to the end and we thank all our speakers, we thank all our partners, we thank all of you, our members of the audience, our community, all of us coming together. Thank you very much for being part of the conversation.